You're listening to the 40 Thrive Podcast, the show created for women 40 and beyond, ready to shake things up. And now, your host, Jackie McDougal. Welcome back to another episode of 40 Thrive. I have such a fun treat for you today. Denise Woods is a celebrity vocal coach. She's worked with Halle Berry, Will Smith, Jessica Chastain, Queen Latifah, Idris Elba, Kirsten Dunst. I mean, so many A-list celebrities. She is the voice behind the voice. But the cool thing is she can help those of us who aren't celebrities. Get this. Denise believes that by using our voice to the best of its ability, it's not about changing your voice, but really tapping into what you already have, you can change your life when it comes to putting yourself out there for a job or dating. I mean, it's really an amazing conversation that we have. Before we get into it, this episode is brought to you by Find Your Voice Academy. It is the one-stop shop to help you take that voice and put it out into the world through your very own podcast. You can position your credibility and your expertise You can create a community of people who are just as passionate around a hobby or a career or something in your life that you just want to talk about. Find Your Voice Academy step by step. You can get through it in as quick as two weeks or you could take six months. It's completely up to you. It's a self-paced, affordable program that is meant to help anyone who's ready to up their game in business, in life, through a podcast. There's a link to FYV Academy in the show notes at 40thrive.com forward slash episode 93. Again, that's 40thrive.com forward slash episode 93. You can get the audio version of The Power of Voice, a guide to making yourself heard by Denise Woods, today's guest, for free with a 30-day trial of Audible. All you need to do is go to audible.com forward slash 40thrive. You'll not only get one audiobook download, but you'll get tons of their Audible Originals podcast now. You can find 40 Thrive there. There is so much. Audible has blown up over the past couple of years. And so I highly recommend you get Denise's book, you try out Audible, you just have to go to audibletrial.com forward slash 40 Thrive. Okay, so like I said, I'm really excited about this conversation. Denise is a pleasure to speak with. You can find her at speakitclearly.com, all over social media at Speak It Clearly, and I think you will fall in love with her just like I did. Let's get to it. Here's my conversation with the fabulous Denise Woods. Denise, welcome to 40 Thrive. Thank you. What a pleasure to be here. So congratulations, first of all, on your brand new book. It came out this week. Thank you. How is it going? It's wonderful. I have not felt this loved in years. And I told someone just yesterday, I said, I haven't felt this love since my wedding day. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) 35 years ago. And it's not that I haven't felt loved. It's this overwhelming outpouring of love from so many people that brides feel on their wedding day. I had so many flowers delivered and just the love. Wow. It's been wonderful. Okay. So first of all, your people, your team sent me the book, an advanced copy. So I was able to really start reading. Oh my. But as soon as it was ready, I actually bought it on Audible. Mm. I felt like I was in a class with you. I knew I needed to actually hear your voice given the topic. Yes. But it's so much more than what you teach. You have such a giving spirit. Mm, Just the way you talk about the people that you work with and how you pull out what makes them so special. Yes, you teach them skills and all of that, but it's so much more than that. It's the human connection. We are missing so much of these days. That's right. And so I think that all the flowers and the things that are happening are a testament to the relationships you have cultivated over the years. You are absolutely right. And I'm getting emotional. And so you're absolutely right. It's this reciprocal giving and receiving of love, yes, of empathy, which we are so in desperate need of right now. Right. It really is a testament to the love that I've given and the love that I'm receiving. And I receive it because I am a giver. Yes. I am a giver. And and givers have a tendency not to be able to receive very well. Exactly. I was going to ask you, is this a challenge to receive? 
No, <laughs> I've taught myself. I've worked on it. What we share in the book, when you come up against obstacles, and clearly for those of us who are over 40, we now know what we need to work on. Yeah. We have a sense of, you know, maybe I got to stop pointing fingers at everybody else and just do a little work on myself. Right. And so in working on the voice and how I was able to incorporate all of me in how I identify not just parts of me, but all of me. And we'll get to that as well. But I also realized that I have to learn how to receive love. Yes. I have to be able to receive it and be okay because what it says is that I deserve it. I'm worthy of it. Right. Before it was on some level saying, well, I'm not worthy of this. Yes, you are worthy of the love that you're receiving, Denise. Absolutely. Do you believe that when we don't receive, when we don't allow someone who's trying to express themselves and we refuse to receive it because we don't feel worthy, we're actually cutting off the ability to have a true connection with that person? You're absolutely right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. A true connection with that person. Right. Because when you allow someone to give you something, it's a gift. You are allowing them to give you their gift. You are receiving their gifts. That's right. And not to allow that is, it, it can be perceived in a way selfish. Right. The reason why I wanted to go down this road is because it's the same with the voice. The voice mm -hmm. is a representation of that. To be able to listen to someone and receive information is just as important and just as empowering as giving it, as speaking it. Right. So listening, receiving while we're quiet in that moment, in that pause, which Miles Davis said that a pause in music, a rest in the music is just as important as the note. Yes. Right? Yes. And so that rest, that pause gives us the energy and time to receive and to breathe. That pause or that rest in music mm -hmm. is a breath when we speak. It gives us time to breathe. Right. And I find that all the time in podcasting sometimes I see editors who want to kind of pull up all those pauses. And I say, no, 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 no. Because that's when the audience leans in. Oh my gosh. Yes. Right. I love you. I love you. <laughs> I tell my actors, I said, you must breathe here. Because just like you need the breath, the audience needs it too. Yes. We need that moment, that pause, that little wave that gives us permission and time to process what has just been said. That's exactly right. To receive it. So when you say something brilliant and then you keep going, you don't really give your audience the time to let it sink in and to feel it. And so then they're right. not feeling the emotions that That's right. would have been natural. So let's talk about the work. Yes. I really am yes. excited. Yes. You've worked with Halle Berry, Will Smith, Queen Latifah, Tay Diggs, Lawrence Fisher. I mean, my goodness, the list goes on and on. But what I'm really interested and impressed by is the work that you do is so universal. Yes. It can make such a huge difference in the lives of those who aren't celebrities or public speakers or podcasters. You believe, and I've read this in your book, that finding your voice, which is my jam, and knowing how to use it can help you with speaking in front of an audience, of course, but things like returning merchandise, talking to the person on the other side of the counter, or absolutely not getting snowed by that mechanic, or yes. dating. Yes. Can you dive into this a little bit and tell me more? I say that your voice print, and I say print like fingerprints. There are no two sets of fingerprints that are the same. There are no two voice prints that are the same. Your voice print is so uniquely yours, and you must embrace that. You must embrace the uniqueness of it and the fact that it encompasses so much of who you are and where you're from and what you're about and how you identify. It all comes together in this wonderful symbiotic way that only you can tell because mm -hmm. you are the expert at being you. No one does you better than you. That's right. No one can talk about you better than you. No one can put your voice out in the world better than you can. And so what I basically want to do is, first of all, give people the inspiration and the encouragement yes. to embrace all of yourself. I take away good, bad, right, wrong. As soon as people come into my studio, I go, there is no good. There's no bad. There's no right. There's no wrong. 
I basically say it's all good. Let's start from that premise. (laughs) Great. And what we want to say is that this particular sound works better for this particular environment or this situation or this particular place that I'm going or with this particular person. So what I essentially do is I give you choices the way you have choices when you go into your closet and pull out that beautiful dress. You go, "Mm, which dress am I going to wear this morning? Or what pair of shoes am I going to wear? (laughs) Right. What handbag am I going to use? You don't just have two. You should have choices on how you choose to identify or sound within that situation. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that you're being inauthentic. It just means that you have choices in the way you choose to sound. Because I'm a girl from the Lower East Side of New York, and I'm going to talk the way I talk (laughs) way back when. And as soon as I go back to New York, I talk like this. All my cousins talk like this. We all... I'm so serious. I am so serious. And it comes out from time to time and it feels good. Yeah. Being a girl from Boston. uh (laughs) Uh-oh. I had a wicked big accent for a a long time. Uh, So we could just talk like that. I'll talk. (laughs) I love you. You heard me. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Give me a couple glasses of wine and it's all Boston all the time. (laughs) Love it. And see, the thing about that is we've been somehow conditioned that these are wrong. This is not good. I say it's all good. It really, really is because I have Southern roots. My parents are from the South. And so little vestiges of that creep in. Yes. You know, New England clam chowder or gumbo. (laughs) Let's talk about what makes these wonderful recipes a recipe. It's all of the ingredients in the New England clam chowder. Chowder. It's right. all the, the ingredients in the gumbo. That's the same thing for us. It's the ingredients that we are made up of, the good and the bad, but the experiences that have propelled us forward, the horrific tragedies and traumas that have propelled us forward, they're all in our voices. And we must embrace them all and, and know that it's all good. Right. You accomplished more by the time you became an adult than most adults <laughs> going to <laughs> Juilliard and all your training and your acting and all of that. Did you find that there was sort of a reaction to you when you started to speak differently? Oh my gosh. Wait a minute. I have this great story. <laughs> this was before voicemail. This was when we had answering machines. Yes. And this was in the early 90s, and I was the first African-American woman to be on faculty in the drama division at Juilliard. Wow. And so I said, well, since I'm going to be on faculty at Juilliard, I, I have to sound like I can't just, <laughs> just speak any way. I'm on faculty at Juilliard. Do you have to talk through your teeth or something? Well, kind of not like that, <laughs> darling, but... <laughs> so I recorded my outgoing message, and I said, hello, this is Denise Woods. I'm sorry I can't come to the phone right now, but if you leave your name and number at the sound of the tone, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you. This is my girlfriend. Nisi, is that you? Why are you talking like that? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, those are the friends that we need in our lives, right? (laughs) Who are like, they know where we came from, who we are, (laughs) deep down to our core, and they're going to call us out. (laughs) Absolutely. And I love it. And see, that's the wonderful thing about this work. It's all good. We have all of these voices and these elements of us inside of us. Right. And so how do we access it? I'm going to tell you through breath. Excellent. Breath is essential. We start with breath. Breath is to the voice what gasoline is to a car. Ooh, I want you to repeat that. Breath is to the voice what gasoline is to a car. Now, I don't care what kind of car you have. (laughs) If you have no gas in your car, it's not going anywhere. Right. And the same thing holds true for voice. All voice is, is breath that has passed through the vocal cords, the vocal folds, causing them to vibrate. Breath is vibration, but we can't have vibration if we have no breath. And I take it to a whole nother level, a kind of a spiritual level. When people say, I get a good vibe from this person Mm -hmm. because voice is vibration. It really is vibes. But how do we get the vibration is through breath. And what happens because we don't take the time to breathe, because we don't take the time to pause and slow down and receive, I can really feel that you are listening to me 
that you are really processing this. Mm -hmm. I can feel the energy of you listening and giving me. There's energy in listening as there is in speaking. And that comes because you are breathing, you are ingesting, you are receiving the information. Breath is so crucial. So while you're not speaking, you're going to breathe in through the nose. Okay. You are breathing now while I am speaking. But as soon as you get ready to speak, you're going to take in an inaudible breath through the mouth because what it does is A, you get more breath and B, it opens up this wonderful cavernous space in the back of your throat for the voice to emerge so that you're not talking through your nasal region. You're not talking here. You are absolutely releasing the voice on the breath through your mouth Mm. and putting that energy in the space between you and your listener. Right. It's wonderful to know the power, not just of voice, but the power of breath. At Juilliard, when I was a student, there in our voice classes, we didn't utter a sound until Halloween. Wait, so you started in September or? You started in September and didn't speak a word until the end of October. Wow. All we did was breathe. All we did for weeks was figure out how to relax the instrument, how to breathe, because that is the essential fundamental basis of speaking is breath and knowing how to find the rhythm of the breath and the energy of the breath and the power in the breath that's going to then empower your voices. So what we do is we learn this wonderful deep diaphragmatic breathing, which goes deeply into our emotional well. When we start breathing deeply, We start going to places emotionally that have been cut off because we don't breathe deeply. Mm -hmm. We don't breathe deeply because we have been programmed not to feel those emotions, right? to suck it up. And so that's exactly what we've done. We've sucked it up to a point where we don't breathe in because we're sucking it up. We're holding it. We're holding on to the traumatic experience or any experience because we've been told, put your big girl pants on. You know, boys don't cry. And it really has done a disservice to our voices because we have not been able to breathe deeply. Wow. Now, there are cultures that do, indigenous cultures that do, agrarian cultures that do, that are down to the center of the earth, earthy cultures that really believe in rhythms because there's a rhythm in the breath. Breath in, voice out. Breath in, voice out. And I talk about the rhythm of breath and the rhythm of speaking and what it does when we really honor the breath and honor the pauses right? so that it allows you to go deep into your emotional well. I think that we are programmed in a certain way. I always say I never forget to inhale. It's the exhale that I have trouble with. Oh. You know, because we're always holding our breath. Even when I'm working out, my trainer will say like, don't forget to exhale, Jackie, (laughs) you know, because we hold so much in, whether it's trauma, whether it's stress, whether it's raising families or jobs or spouses or whatever it is. It's so fascinating. And yet like a duh moment in that breath is everything. Breath is life. I mean, look at meditation, look at yoga, look at... That's what I I say that all the time. All of the (laughs) Eastern practices that are built in a spiritual practice deal with the breath. Yes. You know, it's spiritual. It gets you to your core. It gets you to your center. So this is wonderful. I am so glad that you brought this up because sometimes we can take the breath in, but we hang on to it. Yes. We don't release (laughs) it. We don't let it go because again, (laughs) we're sucking it up. Yep. And so then how do you get to the point where you can truly release and put your essence and your spirit into the world? Because that's what I like in it too. Putting you into the world. How do we do that? First of all. Yes. Teach us. Teach us, fearless one. It's an an education. (laughs) See, when you don't know, you don't know. Right. No, you know, but someone comes along and says, girl, I got you. Excellent. I got you. Let me just tell you a couple of things. Okay. You know, that's why I didn't want to keep it in Hollywood because it's like the secret. I am the voice behind the voice. I am the one that gives you the seat, you know, oh, and occasionally people stars will talk about me and embrace me like Halle Berry just sings my praises all over. It's awesome. And then there are some actors that don't want people to know that they had help. Right. They want people to think that they did it all themselves. And that's fine. They miraculously were born with this skill. That's fine. <laughs> as, as long as the paycheck clears. I 
I was going to say, the check still clears. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> yes. I love that those who are comfortable with who they are and appreciate the lessons that they're learning in life from others yes. are so, I believe, so generous with Absolutely. where they learned it. Absolutely. Because we all subscribe to the theory that no man is an island. Yes. It's community. Yes. Okay, so teach us. <laughs> so this breath that I'm talking about that we hold, yes. what we want to do is really see the release of the breath as a gift that we're giving. And it's psychological. Like we're holding on to things for whatever reason, because we feel that if I use it, I might not be able to get more or I won't have enough. Give it all away. The more you give it away, the more you get. I talked about the law of reciprocity in life and in, in my being able to receive a gift is just as important as giving the gift. It's the same way with the breath and the voice. You must release all of your voice, all of it. Do not hold it. Don't measure it. Don't preserve just a little bit to hang on because I might not get a little bit or put a little bit in the bank. Mm. Give it all let it all go because in the letting it go, it really sort of sets you up for a clean need for a new breath to come in. Right. As soon as you get rid of all of the previous breath on the voice, like if I just say, ah, uh, I'm now out of breath and I have no other recourse, but to take a good fresh one. Okay. Because it's the rhythm. You breath in, voice out, breath in, voice out, breath in, voice out. It's not breath in, voice out. <laughs> Unless you're a Kardashian, then it sounds just like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. We talk about vocal fry. Everything is back here because they're not, they're not releasing the voice. Everything is like back here. Yes. And I talk about why girls of this generation do that. It's like nails on a chalkboard. I'm doing, it's called vocal fry. Right. That and the up talk. It's funny because I was listening to the book and I was thinking, oh, it's kind of like the Kardashians. And then you mentioned them by name. <laughs> but I think I do want to learn some tools. And I know I only have a certain amount of time with you. Oh, we could talk forever. <laughs> we really could. It's so wonderful. That's something. I had this philosophical discussion with someone recently who was adamant that we should accept women's voices, all of the different types of voices. and But I know people who won't listen to a podcast if there's a female host. What? There are people who really have a visceral reaction to a woman's voice. And so what I like about your book is you're not saying change who you are. You are saying learn these tools because you're more likely to be heard. Absolutely. I'm talking about that young woman or that young man. I have a transgender woman who talks about her transitioning. I talk about a woman who was molested, unfortunately, by an uncle from the time she was five and the impact that it had on her voice. I really speak to women and disenfranchised people who feel disenfranchised for whatever reason, people of color, women, however you identify, your voice matters. And I also say that I don't think we should sound alike. Mm. I don't think we should sound alike because not everybody looks alike. Why should we all sound alike? Right. Why should we all sound alike? We should embrace all of the wonderful isms that we have that we bring to the table. I'm saddened by the fact that women podcasters don't get as much love or respect as male. And it puts me in mind when I was a voiceover actor, I, I did a lot of audio books when I was an actress. Mm. And there was a movement afoot because men were the voiceover artists on female feminine products. <laughs> I am so serious. It's crazy. It's crazy. And they said, well, studies show that men have a more commanding voice and people will buy from them. And so what it did was it knocked all the women out of the game to get those jobs. Men were getting their jobs and our jobs too. Right. And so that's when the union came in and said, no, well, we've got to change this paradigm. We've got to show up. We've got to make our presence known as female, whatever, as women of color, as transgender, whatever. We've got to change the paradigm. Right. This is the perfect time for a paradigm shift. Would you not agree? Absolutely. How can you not agree? <laughs> exactly. So let's all just lock our arms together and say, we are moving the needle in this direction. I am so saddened by the fact that I'm sure studies have shown that male podcasters do better 
Yeah. Well, I mean, just like you said, with the with the male voiceover, you know, for female products. Yes. I love the fact that you embrace individuals as individuals. We all have our voice print. Yes. We should all go with that. And at the same time, there are tools to be heard more effectively. Absolutely. And so you got to buy the book if you want all the tools. But can you give us one? Oh, absolutely. Okay. They're really, really simple. I don't want you to think that this is a textbook because that's not what I wanted to write. Right. I wanted to write something that was inspirational, but something that you could do in your car. You know, something that you're thinking, okay, I'm going to do this little every day. Quite like if you want to change the way you look, then you change your diet and you do it in increments. You're not going to just, today I'm just not going to have chocolate. (laughs) I've tried. It doesn't work. (laughs) And so articulation is so much fun. I like to do articulation exercises. Mm -hmm. Just say mamala. Mamala. Babala. Babala. Mamala. Mamala. Babala. Babala. Mamala. Babala. Mamala. Babala. Mamala, babala, mamala, babala. That is much tougher. <laughs> mamala, babala, mamala, babala. Mamala, babala, mamala, babala. That's wonderful. We're getting the lips. We're getting the tongue. We're getting it activated. Say, kakaka. Kakaka. Gagaga. Gagaga. Kakaka. Kakaka. Gagaga. Gagaga. Kakaka, gagaga, kakaka, gagaga. That's so cute. Kakaka, gagaga, kakaka, gagaga. Papa, pa, ba, 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 pa, 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 ba, ba, ba. Pa 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 ba 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 pa 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 ba 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 ta 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 da 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 ta 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 da 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 ta 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 da 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 ta 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 da da da. Great. So we've got the back of the tongue going, we got the tip of the tongue going, and we've got the lips going. And if you just do this, I tell people just do it two to three minutes a day, and you will find that there will be more clarity in the way you speak. And I'm not talking about taking away any essence of who you are. You just want to be the best you that you can possibly be. Yes. If you want to be heard, clear it up so that you can be heard. I love that. Breathe so that your voice can reach across the room. Right. It reminds me a lot of the vocal version of posture. Oh my, yes. You're not changing who you are by standing up strong and tall. You're adjusting it. You're adjusting to be the best most aligned version of yourself. Absolutely. And it's not just because it looks better. It's healthier. Yes. And it prevents injury and pain. Absolutely. The same with the voice. What I'm talking about is vocal health as well. Mm. So that when we talk back here, as opposed to out here, it sounds better. But when we're talking back here, it wreaks havoc on the vocal cords. Right. So I can imagine now I'm going to pull up to Target and I'm going to see women in their cars going, kakaka, gagaga. <laughs> Let's start a movement. Yes. Let's start a movement. Let's start a whole movement, girl. Mm-hmm. I love it. So <laughs> real quick before we go. Yes. I work with a lot of podcasters. I work with experts all the time and they've got the crutch words, the um, like, you know, all of those. Do you have a tip for those who maybe use those a little bit too much? Absolutely. First of all, it's breath. A lot of times when the um comes between the thought, let's not even talk about in the middle of the thought, because usually when you get the thought, you're off and running. They usually come um, just before you have the thought. You're putting it together. Mm -hmm. So what I suggest, and this is going to require work, but it's conscious work. Okay. Replace that um with a breath. Yes. I'm going to show you because you're looking at me, but your listeners can't see me, but you'll see. I just took the breath, but while I was taking the breath, I was forming the thought in my mind. Mm -hmm. I say, if two thoughts are an island, one thought, say, is Manhattan, and the other thought is Brooklyn. The Brooklyn Bridge that connects Manhattan to Brooklyn is your breath not an um. That's what they're doing. They're replacing the breath with an um to connect the thought. And you don't need to. While you're breathing, gather the thought in your mind because one thought is the springboard for the next thought. That's right. Think of it that way. That's fantastic. And I think that in that breath, just from the beginning of our conversation, is when the person really leans forward and is ready for what you have to offer. Yes. But when you sprinkle in the ums and the likes and the you knows, it can kind of take them out of it. Completely. 
The likes is a cultural thing. The ums are a placeholder, a place filler, but those likes and you knows, those are habituals. And you have got to get rid of those the way a drug addict gets rid of drugs. <laughs> 28 days in an impatient... <laughs> 12-step program for getting rid of likes and, and, and you knows. I think we just came up with a business idea together, Denise. Hello, come on. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so how do you get rid of those? You make people conscious of them in their everyday conversation. Okay. You absolutely have to make people aware that they're doing it. And I've had clients come in and usually they're under 35. I go, you cannot say like unless you are making a comparison or you're telling me something that is favorable Mm. and you're making a comment on something that you actually like. Perfect. Then when they realize that they're not using that word in those two contexts, they go, oh my gosh, Denise. And then they'll stop in the middle. They go like, (laughs) and pretty soon at the end of our session, they have stopped saying it because they're not aware that they're doing it. That's amazing. It's become so habitual and ingrained in their conversation. Right. Knowledge and awareness is power. Power. Yes. And that's the kind of thing that can be fixed overnight. Wow. Those likes and you knows once you're aware of them. That's fantastic. Denise Woods, you are an absolute joy. You are a joy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. It has been possible to do this show for two years because of two things. Number one, you subscribe. Thank you. When you subscribe to the podcast, you never have to search for it again. You will get every episode. You'll get an alert. You can choose your favorite podcast app. It can be on your iPhone. It can be on your Android. It can be on your tablet. It can be on your home speaker. There are so many places you can subscribe to 40 Thrive so you can get it automatically. So thanks for doing that. I really appreciate it. And number two, I hope you'll consider sharing this podcast because when you share it, not only does it help us be able to continue this and to reach more people, but imagine what it would be like if all of the women in the world over 40 felt their best and were able to stand up and take charge and support each other, right? Imagine it. And so when you share the show, we are one step closer to that. So I really appreciate it. Until next time, take care and keep thriving. Spring has sprung, and with the change of seasons, sometimes comes an increase in vitality. If you're feeling in the mood for a little more personal time, may I suggest Coconu. Coconu is all about providing clean and natural ingredients when you're enjoying your most intimate moments, with or without a partner. Naturally safe products developed by people who are obsessed with quality. Get 15% off with promo code GROWNASS at grownasswoman.guide forward slash Coconu. That's 15% off with promo code GROWNASS at grownasswoman.guide forward slash Coconu.